we're going to get into a little bit of the science right now uh, and the science of cortisol. This is the stress hormone. And for many of you who um, have either you know, lost a child at the grocery store or seen a bear out in the wild or stepped off a curve and seen a car coming at you, you know what cortisol is, even if you didn't know the word. Hair starts to stand up, back of your neck, heart beats really fast, clammy hands. This is actually the body's response to the brain saying, watch out, right? So this is happening not only inside your brain, but your body. So it affects the brain learning center, which we're going to get into. The handout goes into this a little bit, but it also affects your immune system as well. And so there's three primary parts of the brain that we'll talk about right now that have a real impact on the children we're talking about. And the first part is the amygdala. Uh, and the amygdala is really powerful. It's fantastic. And that's the part of the brain that's in charge of your emotional reactivity. And it's a smoke signal to the rest of the brain and the body. It basically says and remembers every single thing that happened to you that was traumatic and stressful, which is great. So in that moment where something seemed like that thing that happened years ago, it's almost like you're right back there. And that's the amygdala basically saying, hey, this is that moment. Watch out. Be on alert. Hypervigilant. Survive. Right? So the amygdala actually grows in those moments. It gets bigger. But it also interacts with the other parts of the brain. So there's another part of the brain called the hippocampus. And this is the part of the brain that's in charge of learning and memory. And so one of the things that happens if you're a child who's got increased levels of cortisol from their adverse childhood experiences, they're locked in fight, flight, or freeze. They're actually never out of it. It's a constant state of vigilance that they're in. The result of that, though, is that the hippocampus shuts down because the body is in survival mode. It's basically saying, I need to focus all of my energy on surviving and not letting the things that have happened to me before happen again in this moment. This is an incredibly healthy response that the body and human beings have. And so oftentimes we think about behavior, escalation, defiance, disrespect, even fighting as problems with that child, when in fact they could be a really, really great response that the body is having to prevent previous traumas from happening again. So this mindset, this frame of thinking about the work is incredibly important. So I used to have a few students who, when they escalated and, and flipped out, they actually would tell me <coughs> that they didn't remember the things that I was telling them to do. And I said, you know, got into the whole, like, why are you lying? You can't avoid this, this kind of stuff. But the neuroscience actually says that the part of the brain that's in charge of memory shuts down. And so when they would say things like, I blacked out, I thought they were kidding. But it's actually true. They actually couldn't process because their body and their brain are focused on surviving, not focused on remembering that thing, right? So if you have these orientations, if you know this neuroscience, think about the implications for how you respond, think about the implications for the type of school and classroom district that you would want to set up. The other part that's important is the prefrontal cortex. And this part of the brain is in charge of attention. And so when the amygdala is growing and firing, saying, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, it also is in charge of attention. And so you're not able to actually focus in that moment because you're hypervigilant. Right? So sometimes I do a little activity with our principals where someone is in charge of saying the mission and the vision of the school and someone else is in charge of writing it down. And that person is the hippocampus, in charge of learning and memory. And then I have another person who's the amygdala. And they're basically standing next to them saying, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> and then I have someone else who's the prefrontal cortex come in and cover the ears of that person and not let them pay attention and then they have to write down the mission and vision of the school. That's what we're asking kids to do, right? Imagine having ears closed, vigilant, something screaming, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. And you're trying to process what 17 times 20 is. So this part of the brain research is extremely important when you're thinking about kids and how they respond. 